Hi everyone, my name is Maddie, welcome back to my channel and welcome to this video where I'm going to be wrapping up the Dos Sabalong read along I've been hosting for the last three months and there is also a very exciting announcement coming. So for those of you that don't know, Lainey Taylor is pretty much my favourite author of all time. I absolutely love her books and specifically I love the Dilltro Smoke and Bone trilogy that she wrote. I have the books here. I love these books so much. I do have two editions of the series because I don't have self-control and I love them. And I really wanted to get more people reading them because they're massively underrated. They came out like 10 years ago now. So people just don't read them anymore. So I hosted a read along starting in November. We read the last book in January and the last live show was yesterday evening. And I had the best time I was hosting with Spoops from Spoopy Hole, India from What India Read, Katie from Brightness Katie Reads and Ro from Wandering Through Worlds. They were the best co-hosts. I love them so much. I'm so glad they stuck with me, but I just thought I'd do a really quick wrap up of my thoughts on the series. For those of you who didn't take part and didn't watch the live shows, I just thought I'd do it here. Warning, this is going to be full spoilery. Um, the live shows at the beginning of every live, there is like 10 to 15 minutes, which is completely non-spoilery if you do want to get non-spoilery thoughts on these books. And we do warn very clearly when we're going into spoilers. So if you want to see non-spoilery thoughts, that's the place to go to. I am going to go full spoilery. So, but as I said, there is also a very exciting announcement in this video. And if you haven't read Daughter of Smoke and Bone and aren't interested in seeing my review of it, skip to this timestamp right here to see the very exciting announcement of something else we are cooking up. But getting straight into it, starting with Daughter and Smoke and Bone, I'm going to try and keep these reviews snappy. Before I even get into it, I gave all three books five stars. I read them much more critically than the first time I read them. I first read them at like two and a half years ago, almost three years ago now, and loved them if I starred them all then. And I read them much more critically this time, but even if I didn't enjoy them as much, which wasn't the case, I think I would have still given them all five stars. From nostalgia, Lainey Taylor is such an important author to me and I love her books so much. I don't think there was ever really any question of me giving this series five stars. But starting with Daughter and Smoke and Bone, very brief synopsis. This follows a girl, Karu, who is slightly odd. She's like born with these tattoos and blue hair and she has like magical abilities and wishes and all of this. And she is kind of related to this guy who is part man, part beast. And she's just grown up in a really weird way. It's also in Prague. She's like sent up on these weird missions to collect teeth and she doesn't really know what's going on. And all of a sudden one day she loses her connection to this guy and to basically her family and just gets flung into this crazy fantasy world. It's angels and demons. It's love across species and across races and it's beautiful. It's like a slight Romeo and Juliet retelling, I think. It's really well done. I love it so much. I love like the forbidden love soulmate trope. It's brilliant. Um, I'm big, I'm big on it. I really like it. Um, spoilers, why not? Akiva. Akiva is just, oh, a lot of people don't like him. He's typical broody YA. But I honestly think he's phenomenal and I think there's so much reason for his broodiness. It's done so well in his character development. Character development of all the characters throughout the three books is phenomenal. But talking about this one especially, seeing how much he evolves even in just one book is really, really awesome. Like he goes through so much, he's been through so much prior to this book and him sort of reconciling what he's experiencing in this book and his prior experiences, it's just really interesting to see. This is kind of a confusing book. You spend the whole book being like, what the hell is going on? What are the teeth for? What is this? Um, it is obviously all explained right at the end, but there is a lot of wondering throughout this book. And I had so much fun watching my friends read this for the first time. Katie and Bro were rereading, but Spoops and India were reading it for the first time. It was brilliant watching them because they just kept like messaging the group chat, like what's with the teeth? And I was like, Haha, I know, but I'm not gonna tell you. It was great. So this is phenomenal. Um, the ending broke me. I had forgotten how this ended and it almost broke my soul. So fun, yay. Moving on to book number two, Days of Blood and Starlight. Also phenomenal, of course. I love the character development you get with Akiva, with his kind of siblings, Liraz and Hazael in this one. It's just brilliant. Karu goes through so much in this book, so much. I feel so sorry for her. She really just suffers. She is having the worst time of it. She is at the mercy of Thiago, who is this like evil chimera. And it's just a lot. 
it's just it's a really hard book to read this one it's the low point of the series not in terms of like quality but in terms of like emotions because the first book you're learning so much it's just interesting the third book is them like all working together and fighting for this common good this is the one where you can truly believe that it's not gonna turn out well like you just don't think it will no one can agree everyone's fighting everyone is sad and it just it's heartbreaking but beautiful this book does also introduce Ziri though who is one of the best characters in the whole series I love him with my whole being he is phenomenal so love that love finding out so much more about the chimera and the lore as well as the angel seraphim lore so much to it so complex so beautiful really cool thing though and this is definitely spoilers is the way these two books transition so Days of Modern Starlight ends when the Chimera and the Angels, it's like massive spoilers, Chimera and the Angels have teamed up to fight against the evil Seraphim. And this starts before they've teamed up. It backtracks. The first like 50 to 100 pages of this are showing that progression. And I think that's so interesting because in this, it's very easy with the way it's written to just be like, yeah, they teamed up. Of course they did. Why wouldn't they? And it seems very logical. But you forget how much complexity and how much angst there will be before that moment. And I loved that this book backtracked a bit and watched all of that. So I guess that leads us on to the third book, Dreams for Gods and Monsters. Again, phenomenal, a brilliant conclusion to the series. The one thing about this, which I find so interesting and not what you'd expect, is the number of new characters and plot lines introduced in this book. Normally in the first book in a series you would kind of expect to like not know who lots of people are and kind of be figuring it out, all of this. You don't expect that in the final book in a series but I find it really interesting that Lady Taylor introduces so many new things and I genuinely love it. I think it keeps it really interesting and adds a huge new layer of complexity to this series. I think it's genuinely just great. Um, Ziri again phenomenal, the romance between Ziri and Liraz is amazing. Akiva and Karu finally getting their shit together. So here for it. It's adorable. I love Karu and Akiva as a couple. I love all the longing and like them wanting so much to hope about being able to be together and feeling like they can't be because of the way the world has been for so long and the things they've been through and the people they've become because of it. And they're fighting so hard to get back to what they had before this series even started. And it's just, it's just beautiful and I love it. I mean I love this series, that's not a surprise. So that's that. The one pair of characters I've somehow not mentioned in my whole review is Zuzanna and Mick. Zuzanna is Karu's best friend and Mick is her significant other. One of the best relationships in the book. They are hilarious characters, hilarious relationship, just utterly brilliant and add a really nice human element throughout the books because often when you're reading a YA kind of fantasy series and the main character gets thrown into this fantasy world, because they are human you discover things along with them. But due to this book, again, big spoilers, it turns out Karu is actually Chimera and she gets her memories basically unlocked. And so she's fully up to date on like all the Chimera stuff going on and all the angel stuff. So you don't learn with her, she already knows, but that's where Susanna and Mick are really useful because they're very much human. They don't know what's going on. They're experiencing it for the first time. And they add a really interesting insight and perspective to the book, which I love. They're also adorable. Susanna is hilarious. Mick is a saint. We love it. But that is my summary for this series, which I love very, very much. Um, I'm so glad I have these new covers as well because they're stunning, um, even though I still love the original UK covers. I also forgot, I read Night of Cake and Puppets. It's super cute. There's not much to say on this. It's just a cutesy novella about Mick and Susanna. It's great. I'd recommend reading it. You can read this after the first book. You could read it halfway through the first book because it follows Mick and Susanna getting together, which happens halfway through book one. But like, it's cute, it's fun. It's not necessary. It's just a laugh if you want to read it. But with that snap review out of the way, it is time for the announcement. So as I said, this read along has been running since November and we did November, December and January for the three books. But all of us loved them. No one rated any of the books below four stars, which is so exciting for me. And I obviously love Lady Taylor and I've been really wanting to reread Strange the Dreamer, the duology that she's written. And India wants to read it and Spoops is being convinced and Katie and Ro are happy to reread it. So I'm very happy to announce Strange Along is happening. We are having a month or so off. We are reading Strange the Dreamer in April and Muse of Nightmares in May with the live shows happening like the first-ish week of the month after. So this live will be in May and this live will be in June. 
roughly. The Twitter will be being updated to reflect that this is what we are now reading and of course announcement will go up on there as they have been. I will link all those details down in the description. It's pretty simple. It's the same kind of feel as it has been for these. We'll read a book a month, we'll discuss it. But I'm so excited to reread this series. I love it so much. When I first read it, I loved it more than Dora Smoke and Bone. I think there's a good chance that will happen again. And I'm very, very, very excited. So if anyone wants to join us in reading these two books, please do. As I said, you have a month or so, about a month and a bit to get ready, get like hold of the books or whatever, as we were reading them in April and May. We just wanted a little bit of a break before carrying on. But I am so excited for this and cannot wait to read all of these with you. So that's the very exciting announcement. Strange Along is happening. Um, and I'm really hyped about it. I we will have read Lainey Taylor's kind of two core series. She does have another duology, um, which I've not read. So who knows, maybe one day we'll do that as well. But for now, this is what we're doing. So I think that's it for the video. As I said, all details will be linked down below. The Twitter is the place to go to for updates on how it is all going and when live shows are happening and stuff. The lives will again be on my channel as I'm kind of hosting it and it's the same hosts. It's India, Spoops, Ro and Katie. They will obviously all be linked down below. But that's it. I'm really excited. Um, I've just had the best time the last few months doing this and I'm so excited to continue with it. But that is it for the video. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you join us in reading Strange Do and Muse of Nightmares. I hope if you joined us in reading Daughter of Smoke and Bone that you enjoyed it. Also, I will just say if you did miss out on reading this with us, there is actually a Daughter of Smoke and Bone read along starting in March, hosted by some other people. I will link the announcement down below in their Twitter because if you do want to read this series, I will always encourage you to. So please join their read along if you want to. But that's it for the video. So thank you so much for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you'd like to see more content from me. Please comment down below if you're gonna read these books with us or join the lives. We would love to have you. All the links, as I've already said, are down below, as well as links to every other read along and book club I host, and also all my other social media if you want to connect in any other way. But that's it for the video. So bye, and I'll see you in the next one.